Hola amigos, soy Ruth. I'm here to help you use Duolingo and transition from using Duolingo to being able to hablar español. And this lesson, esta clase, is about clothes. Clothes en español are la ropa, like rope. La ropa en esta clase, we're going to learn colores y ropa. Los colores en español don't have many cognates. We have blanco, which is white, and negro, which is black. That's not too bad. Verde, which is green. Now, verde is like verdant fields, so we can get that one. Azul is blue. Azul, you see, it ends with an L. That verde and that azul, they're not going to change for masculine and feminine nouns, whereas blanco and negro will. We'll have a look at that en un momento. We also have rosa. Rosa, like a pink rose. Rosa. We have amarillo. Amarillo is yellow. I like the song, show me the way to amarillo. That's how I sing it. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, naranja. Naranja is a, such an easy word because it is orange and una naranja is an orange and orange aranja. I think they are half cognates. They certainly came from the same root. Naranja. We also have marron, which is not maroon. Marron is brown but we also have morado. Now, morado comes from mora, and mora is blackberry. And if you've ever been picking blackberries, you'll find your fingers go morados. So, those are los colores. La ropa, you could have un top. Una camisa is a shirt, and una camiseta is a t-shirt. So camisa is the, the more formal camisa and camiseta is the more informal camiseta t-shirt. You might also see a uh, polo, which is like a polo shirt. Don't confuse it with pollo. So pollo has two L's and polo has one. Polo is a polo shirt and pollo is a chicken. So you're not wearing that. We also have pantalones, which are trousers. In Inglaterra, pants are um, your underwear, whereas in los Estados Unidos, they are trousers, right? So pantalones is a stronger cognate in los Estados Unidos than it is in Inglaterra. If you want to know underwear, well, that is bragas. So don't brag about your bragas, por favor. We also have una falda. Una falda is a skirt, so if you think of a big skirt with folds in it, that could help you. La falda. El vestido is not a vest, it's a dress. El vestido. This is one of those ones where you think, well, a dress should be a feminine noun. No, because it ends in an O. And it's vestido and it's masculine. That's how it is. Una corbata, which is much more common in men's wardrobes than women, is a feminine item. Una corbata is a tie. In terms of learning and memorizing vocabulario, clothes and colors are so well adapted to making flashcards. I think you should do it. I think you should make a set of flashcards that correspond, corresponden, to the clothes, la ropa, in your wardrobe. Remember, vocabulary is the most essential building block of learning un lenguaje. So if you want to be able to hablar español con confianza, get your vocabulary en la cabeza, por favor. Next, we'll have a look at verb of the day. And what we're going to do is concentrate on a regular AR verb. Regular AR verbs end with AR 
when they're in the infinitive form. An infinitive verb ends with the letter R, la letra R. So here we have comprar. Comprar ends with AR. To go through and conjugate that verb for yo, tu, el, ella, nosotros, vosotros, ellos, ellas, and usted and ustedes, the two formal words for you, to conjugate that verb, we put the stem for each one of the persons and then we add an ending. And yo, we add o. Yo compro. Tu, we add as. Tu compras. El, ella, and usted, we add a. El compra, ella compra, usted compra. Nosotros compramos, we buy. Vosotros, ice. That's pronounced ice. Comprais. And ellos, ellas, and ustedes, Compran. That's the verb. And those are the AR verb endings. In my book, I've created some questions using the Duolingo vocabulary. This is my Duolingo diary and the questions are prompts for you to answer. The questions I've chosen for today are Necesitas un reloj? Un reloj is a clock, but it's also a watch. Necesitas un reloj. Do you need a watch? Yo necesito un reloj para mi trabajo, for my work. Yo no necesito comprar un reloj porque tengo dos relojes. What I've done is kept the sentences short, kept them simple and kept them true about myself. So when I go back and I read what I've written, it's en español, use Google Translate, it is accurate. When I read it, it'll be about me and so I'm more likely to understand if I need a word en inglés, I just write the one word en inglés so it's a little help, a little bit of support. I also think it's a very good idea, and this is a part of my Duolingo diary too, to keep just a journal about your life generally and I've written dozens of questions, docenas de preguntas, in a PDF that you can download for free from the link in the description. The question that I have chosen for today, ¿Qué has comprado esta semana? What have you bought this week? He comprado un poco de comida. A little bit of food. He comprado un top amarillo. I've bought a yellow top. Quiero un top amarillo porque quiero llevar un top amarillo con mi peto, which is my dungarees, con mi peto, porque me gusta el look de los minions. I hope that's been useful for you today and next time we will be discussing school. We've all been, let's talk about it. Hasta la próxima amigos, adios.